Hey everybody, it's Charlie and Chris, other Chris, with Daily Motor, and we are out driving the 2023 Honda CRV. We've gotten to see this car a little bit, but this is our first time actually behind the wheel and behind this beautiful new front. You're gonna notice a lot of Honda Civic from this design, and I bet you the updated Accord will probably look very similar to this. They're definitely bringing a lot of Honda design together, both inside and out, but I'm not one to complain. I think it looks quite good. There's almost, uh, you know, I know a lot of people start to do this with car brands, but you see a little bit of kind of Mazda CX-50 in this with the proportions. You see a little bit of kind of Buick Avenir and um, Audi design in it. It's sharp without looking overly aggressive. We're not rocking steelies the way uh, the way previous Honda CRVs have done. Yeah, these are 18s. That's great. Yeah. Nice amount of sidewall. Yep. Yeah, so far I've been I've been pretty impressed and the cool thing with Hondas is they always drive well it feels solid the back is pretty standard CRV they, they made a big point to make it look like a CRV with these D pillar headlights this is kind of an odd just like blank area you would think there'd be a handle <laughs> yeah. there it's interesting this design seems to combine every element of every crossover ever but still look like a CRV like this looks three series right here this hat it kind of does yeah you know what there was a lot of room there for is a spare tire hey, on the back. That's right. And apparently, I was talking to the designer, they did consider that at the end because the hybrid doesn't have a spare tire. And they're like, what if we just put it on the back like the original CRV, but it was too late in the design. That would be cool. I'm sure I there think... will be some aftermarket off-road kits. There we go. In the floor back here, you've got a little bit of a, a two-option setup. So you see it's a remarkably low, low load surface. If I have Chris kind of stand up there, he's five foot ten, and it's it's almost to his knees. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty low. You can really <laughs> look at that. And then you'll notice some people don't like having this hump here because if you try to slide out dog food or something, it'd be tough. But this comes up and rests right there. And look how quick and easy that is. I've never done it before. That is a flat load surface. I'm actually really impressed by that. You can't fold the seats from the rear. That's annoying. Unless you're tall, you could do, you could, right here. And there's okay. still a bit of a hump. There is a hump. If you wanted to camp in that, it'd be a bit tough, but it is a large, a large opening in a large area. It's cavernous. I like how in the presentation Honda actually pointed out that this is their fastest lift gate ever on a Ooh. CRV. And I mean, it's not earth shattering, but it's, it's not, not painfully slow. It's not painfully slow. And yeah. It's it's decently quiet. So someone pointed out that there's no rear heated seats, and a lot of competitors do have rear heated seats. Oh, wow. But that recline that is kind of cool. <laughs> it's almost. That's pretty dramatic. It's 10 degrees or something like that. Now you're, you're a rear facing car seat owner. Yes. Is the, is the recline useful or? So the recline is useful to a point you kind of want to get it at the right, usually most seats have a, have the right amount of recline. Okay. The biggest factor for uh, forward facing or rear facing car seats is door opening angle. And this is a 90 degree door. Wow. It's perfect. I can just crank that thing in here, okay. bam, down. These latch connections are super easy. Um, oh. It's perfect. A little bit of bolstering too. It's actually kind of hard to get the seat in and not so reclined area. But yeah, you're right. Those are very, very exposed. Nice material. Pretty straightforward design. But like I said, no heated seats. Actually surprised to see no power points there. Are we in an EXL? I think we are. So it's not the top model. You got the EX and the EXL are the gas models. And then Sport and Sport Touring are the hybrids. A little bit more power, a little bit more efficiency and a little bit better trim options. You actually can't get the Bose audio system with the gasoline model. Oh, a little bit of a bummer, you have to get the hybrid. Okay. So we haven't, we don't know pricing yet, but once we do, it'll be kind of the breakdown on whether this is the volume model or if they're really gonna try to push people into that, into that hybrid. But ton of room, you can see. Yeah, stadium seating, we can see well over the front. So that's a good point. Front headrests. Yeah. Um, oh, here, let's get <laughs> to the, the driving so that we can get going and get Chris behind the wheel as well. I like the very subtle all-wheel drive badge rather than the big obnoxious uh, thing post in there. Up in the front, no big surprises, but if you've seen the new Civic or the new HRV, it's going to look very familiar to you, and I have no complaints about that. I, a lot of things right off the bat here. Physical controls for HVAC, also symmetrical. I know a lot of people are going to appreciate that more or less. This kind of ruins the symmetry, but in general, a symmetrical layout. Everything's in good reach for both the driver and the passenger. Nice, very quality sounding and feeling clicks. Mm. If you had gloves on, you could still grab these very nicely. I really appreciate that. We drove Civics on the way up here and they're just so easy. You can pop in, even if you've never driven one, and feel very at home. 
very straightforward, makes sense. They didn't try to do anything gimmicky with these cars. I like how we get a traditional shifter. Honda's done away with their push button shifter. Interesting. And this is just so natural, it's easy. Yeah, it is interesting that they've always done the push button shifter with the larger cars, but for some reason the CRV has always hung, held on to its. They, the last gen had that interesting, like right in the middle. Mm -hmm. or, yep. or did they have a push button for a little while? I'm, I'm forgetting now. Sorry for not I, being a CRV yeah, enthusiast. Yeah, I can't remember folks. on CRV, but they had push button shifters just about everything. Just about, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, I don't mind push button, but I will I, I will acknowledge that a lot of people will appreciate that. Yeah, you got drive modes and everything. Most people probably aren't going to use those. We do have Eco, Snow. Can't change drive modes while turning. <laughs> really? Yeah, Eco, Normal, and Snow. Nice. Okay, all right. It's pretty straightforward. It's not like our Maverick where we have five modes and Alyssa goes, I've never used this once. Yeah, yeah you probably won't. Just leave it in normal. Initial driving impressions. Very nice weight to the steering. It's a pretty light off center. This is rocking the 1.5 liter motor and they've tuned it such. Here we go. Actually, probably doesn't really matter. 190 horsepower. Oh yeah, we could just kind of go have fun. Yeah. This looks like a decent back road. I think that might be the rain that's moving in to ruin our uh, Civic SI track yeah. portion. HPD. Picking up on a little bit of road noise, but other than that, wind noise remarkably low. They've, of course, every manufacturer works to be putting in more sound deadening than the previous model, but this is supposed to have some active sound cancellation as well. So it's got a microphone in here listening to the noises and actually producing some sort of canceling frequencies. This is the same CVT, right, that you get in... Uh... Yeah, they've quieted it down a little bit. We have a revised all-wheel drive system. We can now send 50% of the power to the rear wheels instead of 40% like the previous CRV. Get pumped, kids. So, that's exciting. I actually really like the weight of the steering. It's, as crossovers go, it's not numb. Feeling a little bit of it, and, and there's a good confidence there. Power is better than I expected, too. You, you hear 1.5 liter in a car this size, and you go, oh no. But uh, I don't expect people to be flogging their CRVs. You just want to have enough of that torque to get you and your kids and your husband and your wife up out of the way of emerging GM products. But Very smooth engine and powertrain. Yeah, yeah, I'm not, liking that. Not as grainy as the RAV4 mm -hmm. can be with that, with that four cylinder. Honda's always done a nice job tuning their CVTs. They don't have as much of a rubber band character to them. No. We're going to come up to the stop sign. I'm liking the brake pedal feel. I'm still left foot braking after being in that talon. But come off the line. That's what a CVT does so well. It's just a nice, smooth progression. It is having to rev out quite a bit. Look at that, now we're doing 55 at 1600 RPM. Do we have fuel economy ratings on this yet? We don't, unfortunately. I'm sure it'll be good. I like the shape and the design of the wheel. If you'll notice on the Sport Touring model, you have a heated steering wheel and the button is right smack dab in the middle here, so you can't miss it. Very fast wipers. No sort of fake manual shifting, I like that. They're keeping honest. They're not trying to give you artificial shift programming in the CVT. A sport mode, and the hybrid has some shift programming to it. Oh yeah, because you don't have sport mode in your drive modes. Yep, it's a transmission mode. But you, it's just a transmission. Oh. So it's just gonna... That should keep the revs higher. Yep, rev out a little bit more. Let's bring up, oh no navigation. Maybe we're in an EX. Are we in an EX? We need to get to the bottom of this. I don't just put Monroe's in their cars. No, they we have no idea. What about the key? Is the key rattling around anywhere? Check oh, in here. Go. Oh yeah, see what's, see what's on the key. Nothing. Okay. Well, very informative. <laughs> no, I think they, they really made this one less blocky. When Alyssa drove the previous gen CRV, she talked about how chunky it felt, about the kind of how she felt looking out over the hood, the interior. This feels a little bit more cozy, a little bit more welcoming, and gosh, just so darn easy. That's what you want in this segment. 
I think it's just one of the least disagreeable cars yeah. on the road. Yeah. And what I've always liked about the CRV is you look a little cooler than the RAV4 drivers. The RAV4 is good, but it just seems like the vanilla version. This is like vanilla with some chocolate syrup on top of it. Like you went, you went to the Honda dealer instead of going to the Toyota dealer. And as much as I like the new RAV4, that two and a half liter is so grainy and noisy and loud when you're ringing it out. This feels much more refined, much quieter, barely feel any vibration. It's a responsive CVT too. Yeah. It revs up as soon as you put your foot down. Mm -hmm. Nice material feel. Yeah. The cool gauges, or not gauges, the, um, the vents kind of poking out at you. I mean, there's really not too much more to, to know or, or suss out with this car, but that was the point. They kind of just stuck with their guns and, and made it better. And after driving the new Sportage and some of the other new compact crossovers that have come out recently, uh, this one's probably going to be up at the top for me. And it's not a big surprise considering Honda a Civic is part of the year. Yeah, how does this feel compared to the Civic? I think it feels like a crossover Civic. Just taller, a little bit more refined. Yeah, a little less over. A little less exciting. Braking test there. Wow, the braking is quite boosted when you get into it hard, but I think a lot of people are going to translate that to it feels confident. I mean, it feels strong. Yeah. Very strong. Um, so we're going to be spending more time with this once we get it back at DMHQ. You know, of course, we're going to be doing highway fuel economy test, sound system review. Like I said, you can only get the Bose system in the top trim, which I think is a little bit of a mistake on Honda's part. I think there's going to be people in the EXL wishing a little bit better audio, but time will tell with that one. And until then, I think this is going to sell really well. I'm sure Honda's pretty much pre-ordering them as soon as they come, uh, that the dealers get allocations. Obviously, safety and features are both going to be big for people in this segment, so you're getting pretty much everything you need. Sometimes with Hondas and Toyotas, you're getting a little bit less of the leading edge technology that you get with some of the more startup-y, newer kids on the block like the Korean brands, but you're still going to have your wireless and wired Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, heated seats. I don't think they're offering cooled seats. I think that's a little bit of a, a misstep. Don't 100% quote me. I'm not looking at the build sheet, but... I think most of the things people are going to want you can get in here. I think the only thing that's a little bit of a surprise is no plug-in hybrid option that's that's being announced. I think they're kind of just assuming that the normal hybrid is going to be enough for everyone. Yeah, Honda's making a slower transition to electrification and they're hoping that their hybrid model will be a more volume seller. They're pushing for like 50% of their sales to be that hybrid model and right now that may be the case. That may be a pretty easy goal to meet. It's like I'm on a driveway practically now. This yeah. road is so narrow. Cool. Well, thank you all so much for watching. Stay tuned for more CRV content. And we'll see you on the next one. Thanks to Chris for coming along and a drive with us. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor. And as always, drive on. Mm -hmm.